Well, I'm Chris and this is my vintage RC car assembly video. So this Rhino Arrow is not actually vintage, it's from 2005. I don't know if it was a re-release or what was going on, but this paperwork right here looks a lot older than 2005. I had a Radio Shack Turbo Thruster over 25 years ago and it is nearly identical to this one. So I got this in a trade, I tested it, everything worked, so I took it apart 100%. I'm going to thoroughly wash everything before assembly. So everything has been scrubbed thoroughly, just like you would wash your dishes with some Comet bleach soap. So we're ready to clean the rear differential. I just wanted you to see that it has white lithium grease in there and there is very, very little on these gears, but there is no damage. So this is the working differential where my fingers are, are the two side gears with three little spider gears inside there. Since the pins are staked, I'm gonna avoid soaking this in with the rest. I'm just gonna clean it off the best that I can. And this kit has no ball bearings at all. It uses these little nylon bushings. So then we're gonna put some denatured alcohol. So we got everything clean and ready to go back together, but we have some broken pieces, let's glue them. You know, we're just using some super glue. I think this has a brush. So this does show, so I mean, try to be as neat as possible. Don't get your fingers glued. So we got the grease out, so we're gonna do the rear axle first. Now these bushings can be replaced with ball bearings. Pay attention to where they are worn or how they are worn and try to switch them out if possible. These were riding against the axle inside that case. So now we can put these on the outside and put some fresh ones against that part right there. So regardless of what the bearings or bushings are made of, you avoid greasing the outside unless you're having issues getting it to fit in. We go ahead and put that in there and it actually has some resistance, but we can push it in there with our fingers and it fits perfect. All right. See this one fit in there a lot easier. So we got this white lithium spray. We'll try to spray some inside there. Differential. Okay, so notice that shaft is not spinning. That's good. Go ahead and take it back out, put some grease on it. That's all the grease we need in there. We we'll close it up. So on this car, there are no plugs to unhook anything. Everything is soldered straight to the circuit board. So the pinion gear is just kind of hand snug on there. And I've heard people say you have to do heavy modifications to convert to brushless. This motor goes right in there. Same shaft, everything, same dimensions, perfectly fits. But yes, there are some things you will have to modify. On this one, it has some little alignment tabs right there that would have to be ground off to make this work, but I think you can figure it out. So this one has special alignment tabs. Screws. So we got the pin in there. This piece. Other side's just like this. We need to put these on to get some grip to test it. Make sure nothing's in a bind. Everything's fine. Differential's working perfect, ready to go. All right, now we got this little cover right here. It's got a place for the wires. So it's got this little cover to protect the rear axle and a perfect little place for a GPS. All right, so we got the two pins for the shocks, kind of a pressed compression fit. So the rear axle pivots is one unit. On this shaft, there's these little brackets, kind of slide in there like that and hold it. So I think it would be a little wise to put some grease in there. As you can see where they've been riding already. Kind of lube that up. Nice. So we're going to put this shaft through here. Grease it if you feel like you need to. It doesn't ride on the shaft, so I don't think it really needs grease. And this is the hardest part of the job, getting this all back in here. So the antenna is going to go down through here. All right, then the antenna shoots back up through there. Everything seems to be okay. 
So notice the servo shaft. The servo saver only goes on one way. Now these have this nylon spring and by default they have about 20 thousandths or half a millimeter of play that just comes standard. So if you wanted to take that play out, you'd get a razor blade and you just cut that little notch down to the same size. See how we put it in there and we automatically have that play. Tighten that up real good. Notice a five wire servo. Sticks in there just like that and it's held down by that. I'm going to put the antenna back on so it doesn't get pulled out. Beautiful. So the wires on the switch were scotch taped. I don't have any, so we'll just leave it off. And it had that little protector. And the two little steering tie rod ends. So I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and put this cover back on. This model has these little crystals that you can change out to change the frequencies. If they're not in there, the car won't work. So then these little side guards, one of them was busted off. I'm having trouble re-gluing it. Let's just stick them in there, front bumper. So we got the battery hold down plate. And then these two little brackets are gonna hold it in place as they screw down the rear control arms. Nice, okay. Test it out, make sure it works. Everything's good. Does this still pivot? Perfect. Okay, so then we're gonna put some torque on this lock nut. Just tighten it all the way up and see if it gets stuck. It kind of does a little bit and then just back off of it to where there's no resistance. You don't want this thing sticking in any way. Beautiful. Okay, so everything's looking good back here. Let's go ahead and put the shocks on the back. So we're gonna put the friction dampers or shocks on the back. They're sort of toy grade, but they do work. Okay, be super careful with this. So now we're gonna do the front suspension. It is a bit weird the way it works. Now this one does have these little rubber things. Be sure you look at stuff like that. And let's figure out which way they go. They should have some stops on them. So there was no grease on this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit. Okay, it's got the same type of stud like the rear. Same torquing procedure as the rear. So these front ones, you don't want them hanging up in any way. So just take the slack out of them. So we have the spindles attached. Go ahead and put a little grease on there if you want to. So the little pins, I would go ahead and put some grease and spin it in there. So then on the bottom we have C-clips. These things are so tiny. Okay, you have to be super careful where you are when you put these on, because if you're outside, real likely to lose them. And these do have quite a bit of play. You could shim if you wanted, we're just leaving it. Make sure everything feels right. Put the shocks in it. It's probably gonna bust that right back off. Okay, didn't break. Nice. So we can go ahead and put the wheels back on. This has got two nylon bushings per wheel. All right, just go ahead and put a bunch of grease on that. Okay, got the bushings in there on both sides. It actually rolls really nice. It has no play left to right. All the play is just everywhere else. I mean, it could also be because we switched the bushings out. The front ones were pretty worn. So the guy thought the suspension was broke on it. You just need to set it down straightens up go through the range of the suspension notice how it toes in that's set up whenever you're going through jumps so always pay attention to that before you start modifying everything so we have the pin through there little wheel adapter hub adapter and it just kind of locks into the wheel and then it tightens down no bushings feel it stop so these tires are glued that feels completely different these freaking shocks are so stiff on these older cars. That's why they always kind of hop around. All right, and you see we only have the three body clips left. That is a success. Let's get this body built. I don't know if I mentioned it, but every screw that I take off goes right back so that you don't mix them up. There's a whole bunch of different screws in this one. And just letting you know what I do to have fun putting this stuff back together. All right, put the little glass window. 
Do not ever use power tools when you're doing this and snug everything up by hand. So then this model has a rear adjustable spoiler. Oh man, oh, I missed that. Let's kind of get it in there. See it raises up. Okay, so it's got some kind of little adjuster on it. Something like this. Oh, that's a good fit. Battery goes in like this. He uses six double A's, that's a lot. So we are gonna have a future video doing an official speed run outside. Let's just go test it out in this other room real, real quick. So far, so good. I am noticing this battery is a lot weaker than it was at first. So future video coming, doing an official speed run. I got plenty more RC videos coming as well. If you enjoy, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.